I recognize the member from Prince Albert Northcote. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Bold, measurable, and achievable goals. This speech from the throne is a clear example of a government willing to lead. As this second session of the 27th Legislature gets going, and as we near Remembrance Day, a day where we focus on remembering the many women and men that have died so that we are a free and democratic society, and as I complete my first year as a new MLA, my feelings are no less intense than they were on November 7, 2011. I am humbled to walk, talk, and work as part of this legislature and in this legislative building that celebrates 100 years this year. Thank you hardly seems enough. Yet I can think of no other words that indicate my thanks for the support given to me by my husband, Alan, my family, my Prince Albert team of Sharon, Brent, and Donna, and my executive of Alana, John, Giselle, L, Sophie, Alex, Carol, Jim, and many more people too numerous to mention. As I take my seat for this session, my commitment continues. My commitment to be here on behalf of PA Northcote constituents to take your voice and make it heard at the table where real decisions are made. Before I discuss this throne speech, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I will take a minute to describe this past year. The team of dedicated and spirited women and men that are part of my team back home in Prince Albert Northcote and right here in Regina, welcomed a new MLA and kept my feet on the ground as I entered a whirlwind, a whirlwind of learning and activity, a new world of information thrown at me from all sides the way it was in university, of thinking in broad strokes just like being on a board, a really large board guiding Saskatchewan's future and of being in a really large workplace with hundreds of offices in several locations, including two of my own, and just learning how everything works. Then, throw in a bit of politics. We, family, friends and team, set a bold target and achieved it when we changed Prince Albert Northcote into a Saskatchewan Party constituency after 25 years of NDP thinking. Yeah. Yeah. You and I, your government, and indeed Saskatchewan, has chosen a different path into the future. I listened and continue to listen to you, the people of Northcote. I took that voice and those ideas and added them to those of my MLA colleagues from all across Saskatchewan. Together, you, me, and your government set bold, measurable, and achievable targets. Your voice and your ideas created the Saskatchewan Plan for Growth that you see reflected in this throne speech. A throne speech with bold targets that sets a commitment to ensuring growth continues. Because growth has been good for our province. This growth means a strong economy and more opportunity for our young people. It means more support for our seniors and lower taxes for families. This growth means that we, your government, are balancing the budget and can reduce the debt. This government, your government, is willing to lead. We set two bold targets. To have 1.2 million people living in Saskatchewan by 2020 and continued fiscal responsibility. Think about it. Five balanced budgets at a time when many provinces and indeed many countries are struggling with growing deficits and crushing debt. A balanced budget and paying down debt while keeping the economy strong and remembering those that need a hand up. In other words, a strong social conscience. We see that in this throne speech and in the Saskatchewan Plan for Growth. Prince Albert, Northcote, Prince Albert, and our province benefits. 
This summer, traveling through the constituency of Prince Albert Northcote and consulting with my constituents, I heard loud and clear that infrastructure is top of mind. Our government, your government, has invested more than $5 billion in infrastructure to improve highways, schools and health care facilities. Prince Albert Northcote and indeed Prince Albert welcomes the connection of the South to the North. Your government set as a priority the twinning of the number 11 highway into PA. Next, by partnering with industry, your government will fund half the cost of the final road to connect Highway 914 in the Athabasca Basin. Prince Albert Northcote is willing to be a leader and part of the solution for our future. Mr. Speaker, last year the Prince Albert Community Mobilization Partnership was in early stages of implementation. This year, this community partnership that proactively identifies problems and gathers community agencies, health and education providers and police to address issues before they become criminal matters, this partnership is being asked to mentor other communities in Saskatchewan and across Canada to begin their own community mobilization partnerships. Talk about leadership to help create vibrant, safe communities that we all so much want. Last year, Prince Albert was the launching point of Arts Vest, a partnership program with Business for the Arts, Canada's National Association of Business Leaders who support the arts. These partnerships have generated $1.17 million for the province's cultural economy in its first year in Saskatchewan. This year, OSAC, the Organization of Saskatchewan Arts Councils, held its annual convention in Prince Albert. Your government, through the Ministry of Arts, Culture and Sport, is investing $500,000 over two years in Arts Vest. What a shining example of how our government your government values arts, culture and sport. Here, here, here. Many of my colleagues highlighted the various facets of this throne speech and how Saskatchewan people benefit. Prince Albert Northcote constituencies will see themselves and their goals reflected as well. From building the workforce in many ways, such as working with First Nations and Métis organizations to adding 300 more apprenticeship spaces, from innovation in nuclear medicine that extended the lives of millions of cancer patients to research in food security and agriculture. From the Saskatchewan Advantage Scholarship to the Saskatchewan Graduate Retention Program. From supporting Habitat for Humanity housing for those of moderate means to improving the Senior Income Supplement Program. We see a balanced approach. Mr. Speaker, an approach that keeps our economy strong and our social conscience stronger. Mr. Speaker, last weekend I helped celebrate our newest grandson's christening and visited with his older sister, our granddaughter. This reinforced my commitment to the future. It is for our families and our children's children and their children that your government sets policies and bold, measurable, achievable targets. These targets that you and I, as a team, are implementing. This plan for growth that turns vision into reality. That vision is to make Saskatchewan the best place in Canada to live, to work, to play and to raise a family. Mr. Speaker, this speech from the throne that was delivered on the occasion of the opening of the second session of the 27th Legislature brings Saskatchewan closer to that reality. That is why I support the throne speech, and I do not support the amendment. Thank you.